everlasting and world without end. Thou turnest man to destruction. Again thou sayest, come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight, darkened as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. As soon as thou scatterest them, they are even as they sleep, and fade away suddenly, like the grass. We are gathered here on this solemn occasion to pay our last respects to a great man, for Thomas Garner was truly a great man, far-seeing, powerful, steadfast in his determination. He was kindly with all, and his passing leaves an aching void in the hearts of all those who knew him. Few men have risen to power as rapidly as he, and few men have so well discharged the duties of leadership. Thomas Garner was the president of the greatest railroad in America, perhaps in the world. It ain't over yet, is it, Henry? I couldn't say. I, I knew him so long, you know. Yeah? I knew him a long time, too. I'm glad he croaked the old... Don't you talk about him that way! Good not to break anything, for once. I don't break so much, I guess. Not so much now. Plenty in the beginning. I've had quite a lot of practice. Well, if you were smarter, we could have had servants. I know. I'm not smart. Don't be a fool, Henry. Don't you know when I'm joking? What would I want with help? I'm not a cripple. All I've ever wanted was you and a little house to live in. And, uh, well, I've got what I've wanted. And I've been happy. Honest. You bet. Would you like another cup of coffee? I know you shouldn't have it, but today, maybe. I guess maybe I would. Go in and I'll bring it to you. All right. Thanks. Kill himself. Oh, don't talk like that. I'll talk anywhere I like when it comes to such people. He was a good for nothing. You didn't understand him. I understood him all right. So did everybody else. The men he killed. 400 in the big spike alone. He didn't kill them. He had to protect the railroad. Tell that to their widows and children and see what they say. The way he treated his wife, who slaved for him, wore herself out, lost her prettiness, and for a thank you got kicked to make room for somebody new, young and pretty. He didn't kick her out. It just happened, that's all. Like everything else happened to him. You can't judge him by ordinary standards. They wouldn't fit him. He was too... too big. Oh, nonsense. It isn't nonsense. I would have known. I, I knew him all my life. Almost. Even when we were little boys, he was different. He was bigger and stronger. He didn't know what fear meant. Maybe he was a show-off a little bit. 
But he always made good what he was showing. When I was a kid, we didn't have radios and moving pictures and automobiles and all things like kids have today. But we had fun just the same. And the place we liked best was the swim. It was a pretty one, too. I was always kind of little, and I didn't know how to swim. But I used to go and watch the other boys. Tom could do anything. He was bigger than I was, and a lot stronger, too. But only a few years older. It's funny that our friendship began with a fight. Come on in, it ain't cold. I can't swim. You don't have to. All you gotta do is wiggle around the fire dump. You'll get back to the tree, all right. But I'll get drowned. No, you wouldn't. Come on. I don't want to. You gotta learn. Get out of your dust. I don't want to. I don't want to. All right, then go in this way. Stop! <laughs> That's how it began. It was a pretty good friendship, too, when you figure how long it lasted. He was teaching me to die. Come on, Henry. I don't want to. I don't want to. You mustn't be scared, Henry. You only water. You can jump in there from anything. Oh, no, you can't. You can't jump in from up there. Yes, I'll show you. Oh, no, don't do it. Don't get hurt. But I couldn't stop him. He was going to show me, and he did. He went up and up and up. It was crazy. Nobody had ever died from way up there before. And I was plenty scared. When he got to the top, he looked kind of small from where I was. And I guess I looked kind of small to him, too. Here I come! next week. I was sad because I wasn't going to see much of Tom anymore. He didn't go to school. His father said he didn't need arithmetic to feed hogs or reading and writing to milk a cow. After a while, I noticed Tom was kind of quiet. I looked at him. His eyes were full of tears. What's the matter, Tommy? It's nothing. Yes, it is. What is it? It hurts me a little bit. Well, I caught my hand. Let me see. Gee whiz. Oh, gee, that's terrible. Hey, don't do that. Leave me alone. Don't 
Wait a minute. Feel better? Sure, that's a lot better. Thanks. Yeah. He was a brave kid and a brave man. Plenty happened in his life. Plenty. It didn't seem any time at all till he was president of a railroad. And I was secretary to the president. He's on the wire. Hmm? Your broker. He's on the wire. Oh. Tell him to hammer it down. He says he is hammering it down. Tell him to hammer it down harder. He says to hammer it down harder. He says he's doing the best he can. Tell him he's got to do a lot better than that or I'll kick his pants around the block. He says, would you be kind enough to try a little harder? He says, all right. Tell him to start buying at 30. He says to start buying at 30. He says, how much? As much as I can get. I want control. He says he wants control. All right. What did he say? He said, holy smoke. The directors are still waiting, Tom. All right, all right. I'll go in a minute. Gentlemen, this is insanity. We've more railroad now than we know what to do with, yet he wants to buy a new one. The Reno and Santa Clara is a miserable little road. It's nothing but a mountain of rust. He says it's a steal at $9 million, and I say he's crazy. I'm against it. How about you, gentlemen? Well, I think it's ridiculous. Hold perfectly right. Hold 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 I'm perfectly right. Tell him no right. Nonsense. Nonsense. I'm glad to see that you stand with me. We... Hello, oh, boys. Hmm. Glad to see you all looking so well and happy. <clears throat> I call this special meeting, gentlemen, because we have a great opportunity. I want to buy a railroad, the Santa Clara. Not Not that. That. Never. Never. Don't make so much noise. Don't get so excited. This isn't anything important. Uh, not important. Uh, why not? Maybe I shouldn't have bothered even to call you in. Uh, you say that $9 million isn't important. Then perhaps you'll be kind enough to tell us what is important. Yes, yes. What is yes. Important. yes. The railroad. We've got the finest railroad in the country right now. We need the Santa Clara to make it still finer. It'll round us out. I know all about its conditions. It's equipped over the years. And gentlemen, if I tell you that we need it, we need it. And if I tell you that it's a good buy, you ought to have sense enough to know that it is a good buy. I've forgotten more about railroads than most of you gentlemen will ever know. Now, I'm no financial wizard. I can't discuss debentures and mortgages and short-term notes with a bunch of sharks like you. And I am the president of this railroad. Now, I want the Santa Clara, and I don't want to hear a lot of belly aching about it. I'm hearing you whine about economy. Every time the brakeman on the Limited needs a new lantern, and the old 99 needs a new whistle. Now, if you don't like the way I'm running things, speak up. There are plenty of men willing to step into my shoes, and there are plenty of railroads that could use me. Now, come on, make it snappy. Get the Santa Clara, or don't you? You. Why, uh... <clears throat> yes. Yes, indeed. And you? Well, I suppose so. Yes. How about you? Why, uh, I always was for it. Thanks. And you? Well, by all means. I think the center, whatever it is, is an excellent railroad. Although I've never seen it. What have you got to say, Edward? Oh, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. How about the rest of you boys? Well, let's save time. I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Cooperation. I think that's all. Good morning. Whoa. One thing more, gentlemen. I want to congratulate you. You bought the Santa Clara ten minutes ago. What did they say? They were delighted. Honest? Oh, yes. By the way, that stock was bought. Get Emerson on the phone and buy 10,000 shares. And 1,000 for yourself. No, no, Tom, I, I can't do it. I haven't the money. Shut up and do as I tell you. But, but... Go on now. Hello? Get me Emerson on Porter, please. That's how I got the money to build this house. 
Tom knew plenty about the market. It's funny, when you think he couldn't even read and write when he was 20. I was luckier. I went to the Keokuk Business College. I guess I was responsible for Tom and Sally getting married, maybe. He was track walking for the Southwestern. He was a powerful fellow. Sally was teaching the little mountain school. He was a pretty kid. Came a good stock, too. Brave and honest. Frankie, what's the matter with you all? We got to go home for supper time. Why not? We're having a new baby at our house. He broke the boy. Do you think I'll see a boy named Sally? Well, really, Edie, I, I have the slightest idea. Well, Pa says if it ain't a boy, he's going to ask Edie. Hold your tongue. Yes, sir. Get on. I'll help. How do, Miss Sally? Tom. How are you? I'm fine. Yes? How's the railroad? Oh, but, uh, just brought me a letter. Really? Uh -huh. you have a sandwich? No, thanks. I just got down the line. If I'd known, I'd have waited. Oh, that would have been nice. Who's your letter from? Well, to tell you the truth, I ain't looked yet. Oh, God, I sure can't read that writing. Here, see what, see what you can make of that, will you? Oh, what's the matter with that writing? I think it's very stylish. Of course, you can read it. No, no, it, it hurts my eyes. Oh, I'd shed it like copper plate. Take an expert to read that stuff. Oh, fiddlesticks. Edie! Why, even a child could read it. Come here, dear. Read this. Dear friend, Tom. Well, then, Tom. I can't even tell the <laughs> That's just the way it looked to me. Edie, I'm ashamed of you. Go on, read it to me, will you? Sure. Who's it from? From someone called Henry. Dear friend, Tom. Well, Fred, Tom, my training in Keokuk Business College is nearing completion, and ere long, God willing. Tom? Yes, ma'am? Can't you read? Well, I can read some of the big letters there, but the, 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 the hand scratches I can't. Nobody can read that except school teachers and such. Tom? Yes? Can you read it all? No, ma'am. Can you write? Tom? Huh? Can you write? No, ma'am. And I can't do arithmetic. And I can't speak Greek or Latin or Italian. Now you know. Neither can I, but I can read and write and do arithmetic. I'd be very glad to teach you the little I know. Who learn for? Oh, I don't know. Maybe to please me. Uh, could you learn me to write like this, like Henry? I think so. Gosh, would he be sore? sooner or later, I guess. All I know is what she told me. He took a walk in one Sunday. Naturally, she wore her best dress and a pair of brand new shoes. After a while, they started up old ball. Of course, as mountains go, it isn't much, but it's plenty for a hot afternoon with tight shoes on. At first, she wondered why he was taking her up it. But he looked sort of grim, so she went along without asking any questions. Her feet bothered her a little bit, but she was game. Of course, he was brave and all. Some things any man is scared of. Tom Sally was willing and even anxious to help. What could she do? After a while, he said, Sally, and she said, Yes, Tom. And that's as far as they got. They both had a lot to say, but they were having considerable trouble saying it. The mountain seemed to be getting bigger and bigger, and she hoped he'd make up his mind soon. But he couldn't do it. So he grabbed her by the hand and dragged her up the mountain. Now a woman will go a long way to get the man she wants. So she followed along, and by and by, he tried. He glared at her. 
and he opened his mouth a couple of times like a goldfish. Then he got ready to make the big effort. His eyes almost popped out of his head, and his jaw muscles stood out like whipcord. He tried, but he couldn't make it. He just couldn't make it. So he grabbed her again and led her up the mountain. They were both feeling pretty blue by now. The afternoon wasn't what you'd call a success. Sally didn't care much what happened anymore, but Tom was too worried to notice. What with his sweating and his worries and his Sunday suit and all. She began to think he was crazy. She didn't like him nearly as much as she did at the beginning of the walk. She wished she'd never met him even. By and by, they came to the top of the mountain. But Sally didn't even know it. He was in no condition to care anyhow. They couldn't go any higher, so something had to happen pretty soon. They looked around at the view, and it sure was a pretty sight. On one side was the valley they were born in, with its little houses and the railroad tracks straight and shiny, sort of calling you beyond the hills. On the other side were the real mountains, and Sally thanked the Lord he hadn't taken her up one of them. The sun was set, the mist was rolling up. The air was chilly. Something had to be done quick. So he looked at her with a terrible expression on his face, screwed his eyes shut, counted one, two, three, and yelled, Will you marry me? Well, sir, you could have knocked her down with a clothespin. She said, of course I will, darling. And so at last they kissed each other, a little scared. You know how it is. Her dress was ruined and so were her new shoes. But all she said was, Tom, couldn't you have asked me at the foot of the mountain? And then they laughed and she forgave him. And they were pretty happy. And they stayed happy for a good long time, too. She used to kick a little, but she sure stuck by him. When Tom bought the Santa Clara that time, he got more than he figured on. Hmm. The Santa Clara had a president, and the president had a daughter. He's here. Oh. The president of the Santa Clara. Well, well. So Mr. Borden's calling on me, huh? Ah, this is a great honor. He didn't lose much time, did he? I suppose. I suppose he's worried about his job. Yeah, he wasn't too. What he don't know about railroads is plenty. The old sissy. He kept me out of a club once. I guess he thought I was too common. Shall I show him? him? Let him wait. He kept me waiting for two weeks one time. Yes. Cut the hell. Mr. Garner will see you in a few minutes, Mr. Borden. He's engaged at the moment. Yes, yeah, surely, surely. Thank you very much. Not at all. Her to help. He seemed to be asking her to do something that she didn't want to do. But that Borden was smarter than I thought. She sure was a beautiful woman. Young and sort of aristocratic looking. Tom hadn't met that kind very often, so you couldn't blame him much. Oh, will you come in now? Yes, surely, surely. Come on, dear. This is my daughter. Yes. <laughs> Hello there, Tom. Glad to see you. This is my daughter, Eve. Garner, Mrs. Thurston. How you do? This is very nice. Thank you. I've heard a great deal about you. You don't seem so ferocious as they say. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not so terrible as all that. Eve was taking me to lunch, and as we happen to be passing by, I thought that you'd join us. Why, thank you very much, but I... Uh, I wish you would. Do you? I'd be terribly disappointed. Well, uh, I... Uh, why, yes, yes, I guess I can get away all right. I... So you know what happened this morning. You know who owns the Santa Clara. Yes, I know. Oh, come along, I'm starving. All right. Where should we go? Any place you say. I'm not fancy. <laughs> I'll take you to a nice place. All right. I'll be back at three, Henry. But he didn't come back till nearly five o'clock. And when he did, he looked like the cat that had the canary. Hello there, sourpuss. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Have a cigar? Thanks. I'll smoke it tonight after supper. No, all right. And you can smoke this one now. Oh, thank you. You know, this fellow Gordon is a... I don't see why he shouldn't run to Santa Clara. What do you think? <laughs> it's quite all right with me. 
Pretty girl he's got there. Had a tough time, too. How's that? All married some fellow when she was too young to know any better, poor kid. I guess he was pretty much of a scoundrel. Cost her father a lot of money to get rid of him. She sure is pretty. Say, what? Did you notice her voice? I heard it, yes. Like music. Right then and there, I knew there was trouble coming. That was the day that started everything. Tommy. Well, I'm glad to see you. What are you doing here? Hello, Henry. Why aren't you in your haven? Are you sick? Got kicked out. Gee whiz. The old man in there? Yes. Seen a good humor? He sure is. You picked out the right day for this. Get in quick before he changes. Gosh, I'm scared. I know what you mean, Father, but it's hard to make you see it. You never went to college and... Well, I didn't do any more than anybody else. I just got caught, that's all. Got a tough break. When I think how I had to sweat to get an education and what your mother went through. And if there's one thing I despise, it's a man who can't hold his liquor. I can drink plenty. Oh, you can, huh? All right, let's see how much you can drink on $15 a week. Get McIntosh for me. What do you mean? Hello, McIntosh. What do our junior bookkeepers get? Oh, 16, huh? You're lucky. A young friend of mine's looking for a job. Now, I can't recommend him very highly, but still, I'd appreciate it very much if you'd... That's fine, fine. He'll be there at 9 in the morning. And remember this. Show him no favoritism whatsoever, because he's a friend of mine. His name is Thomas Garner, Jr. Now, you go on home and see your mother, and if I were you, I wouldn't brag about my drinking. Don't look at me that way, boy. You're giving away too much weight. Go on, I'll beat it. I heard Sally was pretty sore. She got a little quick-tempered as she grew older. You never even gave me a chance to explain. Well, you'll explain to me. The most disgusting thing I ever heard of. The idea of your being a bookkeeper. Yeah, it's $16 a week. Yes, at any other price. Especially at my age, Mother. I'll be out taking exercise and having fun. Can't have any fun when you're old. Well, you can't have much. Oh. What are you looking at me that way for? I will not have him treated this way, do you understand? Now, wait a minute, Sally. No, I won't. I've seen you handle men before, and you're not going to treat him the way you treated them. Oh, nonsense. Oh, nonsense, nothing. Just because you didn't have any fun when you were young, you don't want anyone else to have any. You and your theories. I know what I'm doing. Oh, I guess you don't know as much as you think you do. You wouldn't have amounted to so much without me, and you know it. What has that got to do with this? Just that I won't have it, that's all. Now listen, Sally. You've spoiled him and you ought to have sense enough to see it. Treat him like a baby all his life. Look at him. Irresponsible, useless. Kicked out of college for a nasty mess. I, I'd like to be proud of him, Sally. I'm ashamed of him. That's a fine thing to say. Ashamed of your own son. You should be ashamed of yourself. All right, all right. I'll stay at the club for a few days. Stay as long as you please, for all I care. Oh, that's telling him, Mother. Thanks. Oh, Tommy. You don't know what I have to put up with. Oh, there, there, there. Maybe Sally was right at that. Tom might be a track walker yet, happy and satisfied, if it wasn't for her. What's the matter with it? 
Do you want to be a truck walker all your life? Why not? Well, of course, if that's the way you see it, there's nothing I can say about it. What's the matter with being a track walker? First, we've got plenty to eat and want to see our house. The work is easy and I get a lot of good fishing in on the side. I don't see what's the matter with it. Haven't you any ambition? To do what? To rise up in the world. Oh, I don't know as I'd mind. There's an awful lot of worry goes with it, though. Just think, Tom. Foreman, yardmaster, maybe superintendent someday. We could have good clothes and a better house and maybe even a horse and carriage. You like all that stuff, huh? Of course I would. Well, I guess maybe I married the wrong fellow. Oh, no, I didn't. You've got it in you. I know you have. You can do anything you want if you just want to. Tom, won't you try to be somebody? Yeah, I guess so. Good. Oh, I'm so happy. But first of all, you need an education. What, the, what do I want with any more education? You'll need plenty more. You go to Chicago and study. Maybe engineering. I don't know what else to find out what you need most. That's great. What are we going to use for money? I've got that all figured out. When you leave, they'll need somebody else. They'll need another track walker, won't they? Yeah, what's that got to do with it? Well, I can walk track. Say now, what? Now, shut them up. I know everything you're going to say. Mr. Robinson likes it. He wants to help us get along. Just because a woman never did, it doesn't mean a woman couldn't do it. You yourself said it was easy work. Certainly, I said it was easy. What's the matter with you? Please, honey, do it for me. Say you will. Make me happy. Gosh, I never heard of such a thing. You walk on track. A woman supporting a man. Besides, you wouldn't have a chance anyway. Robinson would laugh you right out of his office. No, he wouldn't. I asked him yesterday. What? He said yes. He thought it was a very good idea. Although these members have no stress, it is advisable to insert them in the truss in order to strengthen the top and bottom cords. They may be made very light, however. That'll be all, gentlemen. Tomorrow, we'll take up the Howe truss with a slanting top cord. I thank you. Oh, gone. You're alone here in the city, aren't you? Yeah. Jack and I wondered if you wouldn't like to go out and have supper with us and play a little pool or something after. Oh, say, I sure would like to do that, but I, I just got time to get a bite to eat. You see, I'm going to night school, too. Not really. Yeah, I, ain't got, uh, uh, I haven't got very much time to learn, you see, and I got to work kind of fast. Thanks just the same, though, fellas. See you tomorrow. Good night, Good night. She was old, her hands were kind of red. She was sort of ashamed of them. Though I don't think she had any reason to be. That Borden girl was a different breed altogether. I reached the end of the rope, Eve. I don't know what to do. It's like a physical illness. I can't breathe properly when I'm away from you. Every time my phone rings, I think it's you. My heart starts pounding. It's terrible, it's wrong, and it shouldn't be. Bring her in. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Bring her in. Hello, Tom. Hello, Sally. What's on your mind? Can you spare me a few minutes? Of course I can. Sit down. I, I want you to take me to Europe. Why? Because we need it. There's something the matter with us, Tom. With you and with me, but more with me than with you. I've noticed the way you were the last few months. First I thought it was your fault. Then I had a good look at myself. It was quite a shock to find out what I'm like. I'm a disagreeable old woman, Tom. Bad tempered and everything else that goes with it. I wouldn't blame you if you never spoke to me again. But I won't be that way anymore. Take me away for a little while, Tom. Some place where we can be alone together. Some place where we can become friends again. You've built so many miles of railroads. And every mile has taken you farther away from me. I... I've missed you. Sally. Yes, honey? A terrible thing has happened. I've never kept anything from you, and I'm not going to begin now. What is it, Tom? I'm in love. I, uh, I didn't think such a thing could happen. I, I tried not to. It didn't do any good. What are we going to do about it? Maybe, uh, maybe your idea of a trip is good. Sure. Sure, that's it. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll go away somewhere. And, and have you thinking about her all the time? I won't be thinking about her. Now, now I'll have Henry make all the arrangements. We'll, we'll go to Paris. That's where we'll go. We'll cut up and have a swell time. Why shouldn't you be in love and have fun? And do what you want to just once before I die. What's the matter with you, Sally? Don't talk that way. I never let you have any fun. I made you work and grind and push up. Not because you wanted to, because I wanted you to. I wanted the power and the money. You wanted to go fishing. Sally, don't talk that way. You sound crazy. Take her, have her. Take her away and spend all your millions on her. God bless you, Tom. I, I hope she makes you happier than I did. Sally. Sally. Let me go. I didn't see it myself, thank God. But the flower woman did, and she got in plenty of trouble, too, explaining about the bag. Sally came out like a woman in a dream. She went by the old woman, walked a little way, then stopped, went back, and gave her a bag and said, Here's some money. I hate it. Then she started across the sidewalk to where her beautiful big car was waiting. There were lots of people hurrying by, but they didn't even see her. She told her chauffeur to go home because she wouldn't need him anymore. And he said she looked sort of far away, spoke kind of funny. The car pulled away. She looked up at the big building where Tom had become so great. I guess she knew what she wanted to do all right. You bet she was. He was just as rotten as she was fine. Falling for a young girl when he was old enough to father. Spoiling everything Sally had made of him and then kicking her out when he didn't need her anymore. He did not. He did not. He fell in love, that's all. He couldn't help it. He was too honest. He was too selfish, you mean. I don't think she drew a happy breath from the day she married him. That's a fine way to talk. A man is kindly and honest and square shooter with his wife for 30 years. And then something happens that he couldn't help. Any more than, than, than... Well, he couldn't help. And you say that he was bad, mean, and terrible for the whole 30 years. But I tell you, it isn't so. Sure, she gave him his stuff. 
She made something out of it. But he paid her back with 30 years of love and kindness and devotion. They shared and shared alike everything he made, right from the very beginning. When he got his first real job, the Missouri Bridge. He built it over 28 years ago. And they're still standing. Don't tell me they, they weren't happy in those days. Hello, Mrs. Gunner. Hello, Hi. I'll push some food. It'll be ready in a minute, honey. I, I sort of forgot the time. Got some news for you. You have, huh? Where did you hear the news I got for you? I wasn't sure until today. I didn't... Did you come up to me at 4 o'clock this afternoon? Actually, I didn't suspect anything. I didn't want you to be disappointed. Disappointed? You could have knocked me over with a feather. But, but, but now I'm sure, and, and that's why supper's late. I guess it was real. Sure, sure. It's a great responsibility, though. I gotta do everything, Sally. I'm in full charge. But can't we have a doctor, even? What are you talking about? Are you sick? Well, what are you talking about? Well, I've just been telling you. McPherson broke the news to me this afternoon. He's been transferred to Colorado, and from now on, I'm in full charge of construction. Don't you understand? I'm building the bridge. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Tom. Sure, and it means a raise, too, you know. Those good clothes mm -hmm. and that horse and buggy. Oh, I knew you could do it, then. Now, what were you talking about? Well, I, I guess it won't seem so important now. Well, tell me anyway. Well, we're... We're going to have a baby. A what? A baby. Sally. I love you. Will it be a boy or a girl? Why didn't you tell him before? I didn't know. They'll never stop me now, Sally. Well, of course they won't. I'll make so much money for you and that kid that we'll buy the Southwestern and give it to him to play with. <laughs> Hold it the girl. You'll be a boy. And you'll be fine. Honest. Something for us to be proud of when we're old. So, I'd be a bum without you. But together, there's nothing we can't do. You gave me a Our Father who art in heaven. Thank you, God. Thank you for your kindness. For kindness to the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. power and the glory, what they can do to a man. Cigar? Nothing. 
I, um, I'm going to be married next month. Quietly, of course. Are you? Yes. I think you might have waited a little longer. Why? What good would that do? Nothing, really. No use feeling that way about it, boy. That won't do any good. I was hoping maybe you'd come and live with us. All right. That's fine. Fine. And we won't talk any more about bookkeeping. You have a good time. We only live once. For all, I, I guess I can earn as much money as you can spend, huh? What do you say? Gee, Father. That's swell. That's the way to talk. You're a pretty good kid at that. It was strange to see his son acting as his father's best man. But it was so soon after Sally's accident. It was done very quietly. I was the only other person. Those whom God have joined together, let no man put asunder. But the big strike came along and Tom had to leave right away. He'd been trying for months to prevent it. But it wasn't any use. It ain't safe, Mr. Garner. Not for you, it ain't. But Mr. do as you're told. You can't go in there, Mr. Garner. Is that a fact? Tom Garner thinks he owns the real. But he's going to see different. To work and save and give him the best years of your life. And what does he give you in return? Starvation wages. Just enough to keep you alive. He's a dirty bum, a crook, and a slave driver. If I could only lay my hands on you, I'll... I'll... You'll what? Sit down, horse face. You've talked enough. What do you mean? Sit down. Now listen, boys. You've started something you can't finish. You've got a bear by the tail. Differences and all the meetings and all the threats that I'm going to. This is the end. I've got a belly full. Nobody runs this railroad but me. Now, you men can either work or you can quit. And 12 o'clock is the deadline. You've got 50 minutes to make up your minds. You know, this isn't a private fight. There are storekeepers waiting for goods women waiting for food. And there are babies waiting for milk. Well, they're not going to win any longer. This railroad runs tonight. There are 5,000 men coming down here from Chicago. They'll be here at 12 o'clock. A thousand state militia are moving in to keep order. Now, I hope there won't be any trouble. But if you're looking for it, you will find it. That's all. Now, you go ahead and tell them what you were going to do to me when you met me face to face. This is the most ridiculous honeymoon I've ever heard of. That's what you get for marrying a railroad man. My father was a railroad man. He didn't go off like this when he told me in. Maybe he didn't tend to business so much. He tended to business, all right. My well, father owns his railroad now. That's true. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, your father's still the president. Yes, we fixed that up, didn't we? What do you mean? Nothing. It was only a little railroad, anyhow. I guess it wasn't so little as all that. Of course it wasn't. Now let's don't fight. We ought to be good friends. Why not? Would you like to take me down? 
For sure. You dance well? All right, I guess. Let me see. Tom was away for six weeks. It was a bloody strike. a lot for a couple of years after the strike. His conscience was clear. Then why did he kill himself? I don't know. Of course you don't. Because I'm right. It was his conscience bothered him. About Sally. How mean he was to his son. And the widows and children of all those men. That's why he killed himself and you know it too. It isn't so. You make me stick up for that man. He was ignorant and no good. Bully. Slave driver. Rotten to his wife and then a suicide. You know so much. Huh. Then why did he kill himself if I'm wrong? Why? I didn't tell you. It was so rotten. But you think you know so much. He died on his wedding anniversary. You didn't know that, did you? You who know so much. You think he was so bad to everybody. He made everybody so unhappy. Well, I'll tell you what they did to him. Oh, who's Wolf? Oh, he's Apple? Thanks. I just had lunch. Juicy. Say, Tom. Hmm. You didn't forget what day it is, did you? I mean, because you didn't mention it. Tuesday, isn't it? You're a fine husband. This is your wedding anniversary. Holy smoke, I forgot all about it. I wonder if I'd have time. Board meeting at three, huh? Mm -hmm. Let him wait a little while. I'll go out, grab a present, read it home, and pretend I knew it all the time, see? I'll get something for the little fellow, too. Thanks, Henry. You're a lifesaver. I don't know what to do now. Stop at what's-his-name, you know, the jeweler by the bridge. Right. Nothing much about the same as usual. You ought to know by now. Of course. Of course I do. Why don't you come and have tea with me, darling? Yeah? Yeah? He won't be home till dinner. He has a director's meeting. Go to go go. He's right here on the floor beside me. Like a little blonde angel. He looks just like you. Goodbye, dear. Don't be long. Why, Tom? Who are you talking to? Why, I... Talking to Isabel Chester, a girl I used to go to school with. I wanted her to come to tea. Isn't that perfectly natural? You don't mind, do you? I have to see people, don't I? Don't I? Well, what have you got there? Why, Tom, they're lovely. It's our wedding anniversary, isn't it? Of course. They're beautiful, Tom, thank you. And this is for Buster. Sweet lamb, you're so thoughtful. Say thank you to Daddy. Say thank you. I don't know how I can ever... Go. What was her name, your friend? Chester, dear. Beth Chester. He walked by like an old man, but his eyes were crazy. I particularly wanted to take up the freight rate on Pig Island. Jane Lewis, Nevada to Wyoming. 
gondolas on the other hand. Dallas by way of the canal. Colorado also, but mostly Michigan and Wisconsin. But if we ship it a whole train full at a time, this is not the case. He's right here on the floor beside me. That little blonde angel. Mm -hmm. He looks just like me. I'm sorry, Edward. I didn't hear what you said. Go on. It seems to me if we haul pig iron in whole trains instead of gondolas on the other hand. He's right here on the floor beside me. Dallas by way of the canal. Like a little blonde angel. Colorado also, but mostly Michigan and Wisconsin. He looks just like you. No! No! Oh, God, don't let it be. I'm ill. You'll have to forgive me. See little boy. Help me. Yes, Tom. No. just once before you die.
Sorry. 